K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. You know what time it is, so sit back and get ready for the Stafford Voice, your dose of conservative in a world of liberal. Three, two, one. Hey, hey, how you doing, everyone? I am your host, Daniel Stafford, and you are listening to the Stafford Voice, where we are conservative in a world of liberal. And tonight, yes, as you guessed it, we are going to talk about SCOTUS, the Supreme Court, and what came out last week, pretty much in regards to marriage equality. And before we get started, I want you to know that there are many, many ways to listen. So wherever you're at, set the channel as a favorite so you don't get left behind. And if for some strange, crazy reason you do miss the show, you can catch the replay, so just sit tight. There is no need to panic, because we've got you. In the case you aren't already following on social media, find me on Twitter, at Stafford Voice. And since you're over on the Twitters, make sure you have downloaded Periscope. Look me up over there as well, because every show, and subsequently every night following, we will hop on there real quick and talk about something that's going on in the world. Um, before the show, it's kind of a pre-show. You can um, you can kind of get a rundown of what's going to happen on the show and what we'll be talking about. So make sure you've got the Periscope app on your mobile device and look me up over there. Send me a bunch of hearts. I totally appreciate it because I love you guys and I, I know you guys love me as well. Also, since you're over on the interwebs, look me up on Facebook as well. All you got to do is search for The Stafford Voice, follow Politatainment as well, and any and all of the hosts under the Politatainment, because they rock. I mean, we, we, (laughs) we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them and if it wasn't for you. You guys keep us going, all of you awesome listeners. Uh, We, we love you from the bottom of our heart. Also, stay up to date with anything and everything going on out in the world that we will talk about here and on the other shows over on politattainment.net, or you can check me out over on thestaffordvoice.com. Actually, I posted a couple of things um, after the rulings were released, and I kind of dove into them a little bit, and found some stuff that kind of confused me on the Obamacare and the marriage equality. Mainly the confusion circles around Chief Justice Roberts. We'll get to that here in just a minute. Also, I know that many of you are out there on K98talk.com. Make sure you send some love to to the station. Um, I don't know exactly how you would have to how you want to do it, but please give them a shout out on Twitter or if you're in the chat room, do it there, it, wherever you're at. Send some love to the station because without them, it would be really hard, obviously, to get our message out to you guys. So let's just dive into this stuff, shall we? Uh, if you caught the pre show, yeah, we're going to run down. I've got a handful of quotes many of which we're going to try and link together. Um, I I hope that it just doesn't come out as a convoluted mess, kind of like the rulings did. But, you know, I, I spent a considerable amount of time over the weekend thinking about this stuff. Um, as, as many of you know, this kind of sat pretty heavy on my mind. If you caught some of the periscopes that we did uh, since Thursday. Um, But anyway, um, I'm a history lover, so I kind of tend to lean on history for 
guidance as to where we're at and kind of where we're going. So tonight is no different. I want to start out with a quote from John Adams. John Adams back in 1774 said this, and this is Latin, so sorry, forgive me, my Latin stinks. I never officially took Latin in anything, so I just take it by the seat of my pants. Yeah, I know, if you if you swing that way, sorry. Every now and then, some of those jokes slip, but he said, obsta principius, uh, which pretty much Latin for nip it in the bud. He said, obsta principis, nip the shoots of arbitrary power in the bud is the only maxim which can ever preserve the liberties of any people. When the people give give way, their deceivers, betrayers, and destroyers press upon them so fast that there is no resisting afterwards. The nature of the encroachment upon the American Constitution is such as to grow every day more and more encroaching. Like a cancer, it eats faster and faster every hour. The revenue creates pensioners, and the pensioners urge for more revenue. The people grow less steady, spirited, and virtuous. The seekers more numerous and more corrupt, and every day increases the circles of their dependence and expectance until virtue, integrity, public spirit, simplicity, and frugality become the objects of ridicule and scorn, and vanity, luxury, foppery, selfishness, meanness, and downright venality swallow up the whole society. To echo what he says, like a cancer, some of the stuff that we are seeing happening, that is happening before us, is is like a cancer. It, it is... It is this stuff is being thrown at us so fast that we honestly we have a hard time keeping up with it because it's moving so fast. And yes, to to pretty much to to really understand the the enemy, you kind of have to go behind enemy lines. And we I I spent a few minutes before the show flipping through the enemy's manual, which is from Saul Alinsky, you know, rules for rules for radicals. I'll get into that here in just a, just a bit. But our very liberties are at stake. If you missed what happened, honestly, I feel sorry for you. Because this is more than being forced to accept Obamacare, or as Scalia calls it, SCOTUS care. This is more than marriage equality. It is. There's a bigger picture here. And the picture is so big that sometimes you can't see the whole thing you know it's that you can't see the forest because of the trees or something like that well matter of fact james madison in 1788 in uh, federalist number 51 says but the great security against a gradual concentration of the several powers in the same department consists in giving to those who administer each department the necessary constitutional means and personal motives to resist encroachments of the others. Ambition must be made to counteract ambition. The interest of the man must be connected with the constitutional rights of the place. It may be a reflection on human nature that such devices should be necessary to control the abuses of government. To take that one step further, as we all know, 
this weekend is July 4th, and it was a giant leap for individual freedom and individual liberty. I've touched on this before, and I feel it's necessary to do it again. But back in 1776, they were facing the same things that we were that we're facing today. You don't believe me? Go back and read the things that we are we were declaring our independence from. Go back and read them. I'm just only going to touch here on the introduction leading into it. Because if you want if you need action and you need to know exactly what to do and where to go from here, where do we go? Then it's very important to understand what the is being said in the Declaration of Independence. Because we're getting ready to celebrate that very thing this weekend it's not a day of barbecue it's not a day of fireworks it's a day to celebrate our independence yet our independence is being threatened by the very people that we keep continuing to send back to Washington When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to abolish or to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness." Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. It is extremely important for me to understand what is being said. Our founding fathers were wise beyond their means, eternally blessed by a higher being that helped lead and guide them to shape this nation. If you find offense to that, then please go back in history and read their words.
They did not make a mistake. They were very clear in what they said. The Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence are not living and breathing documents. They are fixed in their meanings. They do not evolve. What they say is clear as day. And yet, we continue to send people to Washington that pervert them. Some of which have the power to put people in power who violate those. Who violate the Constitution and violate the very power that we the people allow them to have. I'm speaking mainly about Chief Justice Roberts now. I was really confused. I, to be quite honest, we all kind of saw that oh, the, the, the ruling on Obamacare was going to come down the way it was, the way it did. It was pretty inevitable. But it's the wording that was used. Chief Justice Roberts said that, and this was during his uh, during during the affirmation. He said that uh, our role is more confined to say what the law is. A fair reading of legislation demands a fair understanding of the legislative plan. Then he goes on to say that uh, Congress passed the Affordable Care Act to improve health insurance markets, not to destroy them. If at all possible, we must interpret the act in a way that is, con that is consistent with the former and avoids the latter. Uh, Section 36B, which is what was being discussed that had to do about um, that it falls on the state he says can fairly be read consistent with what we see as Congress's plan and that is the reading we adopt and then they later affirm it 6 to 3 the way I see that is He's admitting that their role is confined. He's saying, look, we, we have very limited, limited options as to what we can do. Our role is limited. We're only the Supreme Court. We're only here to interpret what was written. But yet he says, basically, we need to kind of look at this as though what they intended to do. It was intended to be a good thing. Never mind the fact about Gruber. And Gruber threw it in the face of all the Americans and, and called everyone stupid. Never mind that. But, the next day, that was on Thursday, on Friday, when they decide that they're going to rule on marriage equality, on same-sex marriage, he had this to say. Now, he voted against. So, this is in his dissenting argument. He says, but this court is not a legislature. Whether same-sex marriage is a good idea should be of no concern to us. Under the Constitution, judges have power to say what the law is, not what it should be. Oh, hello. <laughs> Face palm. Hey, jackass, just a day before, you said what it should be, but today you want to say what the law is, not what it should be. God, face palm. Oh, dumbass. And then he later says, in short, our Constitution does not enact any one theory of marriage. The people of a state are free to expand marriage to include same-sex couples 
or to retain the historic definition. Today, however, the court takes the extraordinary step of ordering every state to license and recognize same-sex marriage. But for those who believe in a government of laws, not of men, the majority's approach is deeply disheartening. A contradiction of mass proportion. If you ask me, I'm still baffled by how just one day will change your mind. I don't know. I mean, maybe there's some truth to the fact that he was playing the markets and knew that if they passed Obamacare, he was going to make a boatload of money. It's just, you have to give, you almost have to give validity to everything that's being tossed around because of the contradictions one day to the next. And yes, if you're in the chat room, yes, Ron, multiple personality disorder could explain it. Very well could be right. I'm, for some reason, I... I'm starting to think I have multiple personal multiple personality disorder because one day I identify as a white guy, the next I identify as a goat. <laughs> Maybe I need to go over and slap some ISIS assholes and identify with them. Because while we're over here putting pretty rainbow colors all over the White House, ISIS is taking homosexuals and throwing them off the building. Oh, that's so grand. That's the JV squad, right, Mr. President? And no, I'm not a goat. I'm a red-blooded American. And I'm sick and damn tired of what is being allowed to take over this country. It is absolutely ridiculous. You've got Iran, who were begging to pay, to take a deal on 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 um, nuclear weapons talks. We're begging them. We're kissing their ass for nothing. We're not going to get anything out of it. And what are they doing? They're taking openly homosexual males, and get this. Sending them through the hospital getting gender reassignment surgery. Cut it off. You don't need it, do you? Welcome to Iran. Meanwhile, ISIS is continuing to throw homosexuals off the top of buildings, and they celebrate it in the middle of the street. And we shine pretty, pretty little colors on the White House. Come July 4th, if the White House does not paint red, white, and blue on the White House, I'm not calling for a revolution, but I'm saying it's almost time. We may have reached our breaking point. When we curtail to 3% of the population, I'm, I'm not dim diminishing the, the fact that they deserve to have equal rights. That's not the issue. Because yes... They do deserve the same rights. If a guy truly and honestly to the depths of his soul loves another guy, then so be it. If a woman feels the same way about another woman, great. But in my eyes, it's not marriage. 
I have no problem with you being together. I really don't. I think you deserve the same things, the, the same opportunities that, that a traditional marriage receives. The problem I have is when the Supreme Court oversteps their bounds, when elected officials overstep their bounds and completely throw out the voice of the people. If you think I'm off my rocker, let's listen to let's let's hear what Justice Scalia had to say about in his dissent. He said this practice of constitutional revision by an unelected committee of nine, always accompanied, as it is today, by extravagant praise of liberty, robs the people of the most important liberty they asserted in the Declaration of Independence and won in the Revolution of 1776, the freedom to govern themselves. He later says, this is a naked judicial claim of legislative indeed super legislative power a claim fundamentally at odds with our system of government a system of government that makes the people subordinate to a committee of nine unelected lawyers does not deserve to be called a democracy and a little further in his dissension to allow the policy question of same-sex marriage to be considered and resolved by a select patrician highly unrepresentative panel of nine is to violate a principle even more fundamental than no taxation without representation no social transformation without representation i'm sorry but that's telling me that i'm pretty spot on just as the rest of you are because the majority of the people understand that this was about taking away their voice taking away the power of the state this was a complete perversion of the 14th amendment which has nothing to do with same-sex marriage it actually has nothing to do with marriage unheard of when your voice when the voice of millions and millions of people is thrown by the wayside by only five people who think they're better than you who think they know more and to be quite honest marriage is not a right it's a privilege I'm privileged to be married to my wife. I truly I cannot be th any more thankful to God for giving me such a blessing. Aside from the blessing of my son, his wife, and my father and mother. They are all gifts from God. Marriage goes marriage goes before man. Marriage predates man on earth. Christ's bride is the church. That was talked about in the heavens and completely laid out in one giant beautiful plan. And then they went to work and gave us what we have today. Yet we throw it away as though it's nothing.
honestly, is this something that the government needed to be involved with? No. Is this something that the states needed to be involved with? No. Is it something that maybe we should have just tossed to the church and just said, you know what, this falls on you. It falls on you. Marriage is a religious thing. It Marriage always falls back to a bond of unity. This is more than about marriage. If this was about marriage, this would have been done a long time ago. They continue to throw this crap in our face over what? A piece of paper that says you're married? You know what? Send me a damn email, daniel at politattainment.net, and I will print you off a damn certificate that says, congratulations, you're married. If this was all about a damn piece of paper, it would have been over with. But no, it's not. If you love each other, who in the hell cares? Tell the government to shut the hell up. They have no reason to tell you who you can and can't love. And the same that goes with the state. Who the hell cares? It all comes down to finances, to taxes. They want more of your money, more of what you have to give to somebody else. I'm going to kind of transition along here because, you know, where is all this crap coming from? Obviously, there has to be some validity to why things are the way they are. If you have a tinfoil hat, I hope you brought it because now is the time that you need to put it on. Back in 1963 and maybe a little before that, because of something that um, Cleon Skuzin put put in a book. However, communist goals, and if you search for it on the internet, you can look for the communist goals of 1963. They were actually read into the congressional records. I'm not going to touch on all of them, but I have a handful of them here. And I really want you to understand where we're at today. And if you want to get conspiratorial, I don't freaking care. This goes along with a project that I've worked on for probably the last five years. I'm not going to give any more information other than that. But it also goes along with another country overseas. Who I believe is deeply tied to the information put forth in these communist goals. Number 15, capture one or both of the political parties in the United States. Number 16, use technical decisions of the courts to weaken basic American institutions by claiming their activities violate civil rights. Number 22, continue discrediting American culture by degrading all form of artistic expression. An American communist cell was told to, quote, eliminate all good sculpture from parks and buildings, unquote. Substitute shapeless, awkward, and meaningless forms. Number 25, Break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography and obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radio, and TV. Number 26. Present homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as, quote, normal, natural, and healthy. Number 27. Infiltrate the churches and replace revealed religion with, quote, social religion. Discredit the Bible and emphasize the need for intellectual maturity, which does not need a religious crutch. Number 29. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. Number 32. Support any socialist movement to give centralized control over any part of the culture. 
i.e. education, social agencies, welfare programs, mental health clinics, etc. Number 40. Discredit the family as an institution. Encourage promiscuity and easy divorce. Number 42. Create the impression that violence and insurrection are legitimate aspects of the American tradition. That students and special interest groups should rise up and make a united force to solve economic, political, or social problems. Just a handful of the crap that was thrown down our throat in the Communist Manifesto. Yes, the Communist Manifesto. What they consider communist goals. Communist goals that I believe originated from another country who has wanted to subvert the American ideology and the American tradition and the American way of life for since the early 1900s. If you want to know a little more about what I think about that, contact me outside of the show. What I think about that. But, you know, taking all of that, what I just read to you, and putting it into context... is right on with where it's at and where it needs to be. A few years ago, excuse me, a few years ago, you'll recognize his voice. A few years ago, the guy that lit up the White House in pretty, pretty little pastels said this. Uh, Define marriage. I believe that marriage uh, is the union between a man and a woman. Now, for me as a Christian, for me, for me as a Christian, it's also a sacred union. Uh, you know, God's in in the mix. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, would you support um, a, uh, a constitutional amendment with that? Uh, that definition? No, I would not. Why not? And because, because historically, because historically, we have not defined marriage in our constitution. It's been a matter of state law. That has been our tradition. Now, I mean, let's break it down. The the reason that people think there needs to be a, a constitutional amendment, some people believe, is because uh, of the concern that. Uh, uh, about same-sex marriage. Uh, I am not somebody who promotes same-sex marriage, but I do believe in civil unions. I do believe that we should not, uh, th- that for a gay partners to want to visit each other in a hospital, mm-hmm. for the state to say, you know what, that's all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think in any way inhibits my core beliefs about what marriage are. Uh, I think my faith is strong enough and my marriage is strong enough that I can afford those civil rights to others, even if I have a different perspective or a different view. Oh, God. You spare me the freaking crap. That was even before he was elected. Before he was elected, he was all for traditional marriage. Before he was elected, he didn't care about same-sex marriage. He would have just rather left it be and leave it to the states. But no, 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 no. We got to send that stuff to the court. Send it to the courts. Well, what the, you know, God's in the mix. Freaking jackass. Anyway, somebody else that happens to be running for president right now had a little something to say on what marriage was. And quite honest, I probably wouldn't take marriage advice from this person. Yeah, no. But check out what she had to say. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I have had occasion in my life to defend marriage. 
to stand up for marriage, to believe in the hard work and challenge of marriage. So I take umbrage at anyone who might suggest that those of us who worry about amending the Constitution are less committed to the sanctity of marriage or to the fundamental bedrock principle that it exists between a man and a woman going back into the mists of history as one of the founding, foundational institutions of history and humanity and civilization, and that its primary principal role during those millennia has been the raising and socializing of children for the society into which they are to. Oh, yeah, that's right. A marriage constitutes a family and allows you to raise children. Oh, isn't that sweet? Grandma Clinton. <laughs> oh, I'm so freaking touched. Not! Oh. Okay, so... Where does all this crap come from? Where does it come from? Where does this ideology take place? Well, we've all got rule books. For the most of us that absolutely love and adore this country, we look at our founding documents. Hold them very close to us. We carry a copy with us. It's our rule book. It's our guide along with the Bible. Personally speaking, I've got all of those with me on my body at all times. Their rule book is none other than Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. I just want to highlight a couple of things that he says about tactics. He says that the fourth rule is make the enemy live up to their own book of rules. You can kill them with this, for they can no more obey their own rules than the Christian church can live up to Christianity. The fourth rule carries with it the fifth rule. Ridicule is man's most potent weapon. The eighth rule Keep the pressure on with different tactics and actions and utilize all events of the period for your purpose. The ninth rule, the threat is usually more terrifying than the thing itself. Oh, like same-sex marriage? There's really no threat in it, right? Other than the degeneration of society. The tenth rule, the major premise for tactics is the development of operations that will maintain a constant pressure upon the opposition. The thirteenth rule, pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. Those are their rules. That's what they do. What are our terms? What are we going to do to fight back? Are we just going to continue to sit idle and let them ruin the greatest country that has ever been known to man? This land was set apart by God to do something great. Have we lived up to that throughout the years? I would say so. Have we made mistakes? Yes, everybody makes mistakes. It's up to us to learn from them and go forward. But we can't go forward if we just sit idle and let the enemy take over. What we have to do is take the country back. And I'm... Unfortunately, I kind of have to... 
go against what I've always thought. And what I've always thought is to work on the hearts and minds of individuals. And honestly, it wears me the hell out. It does. I genuinely care about people, about where they're at, what they're doing, where they're going. You don't believe me, ask anybody on the Politainment crew. Ask anybody that has reached out to me on social media and they will tell you exactly where my heart is. But I fear that we are losing grip. It is time to tie a knot at the end of the rope and make sure we don't slip any further. It's time to adopt something that Sun Tzu said in reference of the art of war. And that would be when you face certain death victory is the only thing on the horizon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. We can no longer work on one little thing here, one little thing there. We can't, because while we're working on one thing, they're attacking ten other things. We have to move forward. It's time to go forward. We can no longer retreat and play Mr. Nice Guy. We can worry about the hearts and minds later once we get their damn attention. And once we're able to start educating them, only then can we focus on the hearts and minds of individuals. The liberties that that we lost last week, as small as they may seem, are huge. In their book. It's not about passing same sex marriage. It's about forcing compliance, allowing more and more control by the government. Right now, there's only one branch of the government. One. The legend, the the executive branch. Okay, so. Two, sorry, two. We've got the executive branch and we have the legislative branch. The Supreme Court, they fall under the legislative branch after the, after the crap we've seen lately. The stuff that we saw last week needs to stop. We only have a few in Washington on our side. Very, very few. Justice Scalia is one of them. If you need a copy of his dissensions, I highly recommend reading them. If you need a copy, contact me. I would be, I would happy, I would be so elated to send you a copy. It's just as easy to go over to SCOTUS.org or whatever it is, SCOTUS blog, go over to SCOTUS blog and read it. Read every single word of it. I challenge you to do it. You have to do it for yourself, you have to do it for your kids, and you have to do it for your kids' kids.
Now, wow, I didn't realize how long we went on time. But, you know what? Let's just go ahead and dive into, uh, let's dive into something that, that uh, we'd normally save for the end of the show. And we are approaching that, so, you know what? It's time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Who Said That? It, it's a... It's one little segment that we like to have fun with and we call people out. doesn't matter whether you're on the left of the aisle, the right of the aisle, conservative, libertarian, liberal, socialist, who cares? Republican, Democrat, president, Congress, whatever. I don't care who you are. We're going to call you out if you're saying something, if you are saying something so ridiculously stupid. If you are stuck on stupid, guess what? We're going to call you out. This week, there is no exception. You may or may not recognize this person's voice, but never mind the fact that he is so dreamy and past his prime, but check out what he had to say. Check this out. This completely off topic of what we've covered tonight, but highly beneficial to distract ourselves. Check this out. We can no longer claim ignorance as an excuse for inaction because it's the overwhelming judgment of science that climate change is real and the result of human activity. And as Pope Francis has so eloquently pointed out, climate change is a moral imperative that transcends politics. And so, everywhere we look, moderate weather seems to be going extinct. And as temperatures rise, so do global instability, poverty, and conflict. Two degrees Celsius is all that separates our planet from becoming less habitable. Now, that difference is barely perceptible to human skin. So, our window of opportunity is narrow. And the margin between success and catastrophic failure is unfortunately thin. And the time for half measures and climate denial is over. Okay, if you couldn't figure it out by the the beautiful, beautiful voice of that beautiful, beautiful man. Oh, he's so dreamy. I mean, he's, he's dreamy McDreamerson, right? Oh, What I wouldn't wish to... Oh, anyway. Robert Redford, you freaking dumbass. Climate change. Talking about climate change to the United Nations. And yes, you know, if you go back in time, you'll realize... Oh my God, if we don't do something, the polar ice caps are going to melt. Oh my God, they're melting. We got to change what we're doing. We're... They're larger than they ever have been. But 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 two degrees on on the on the on our skin may not feel like much. You're right. It already feels like a hundred degrees outside. Hundred and two. That's nothing. I've been a lot hotter than that. <laughs> what a freaking dumbass. To get up there in front of the United Nations and he tried to joke around and say, look, I'm, I'm an actor and I'm sorry about that, but, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm an activist and I got important stuffs to say and I'm gonna say it because I'm Robert Redford and I got a lot of money and damn, I'm good looking. Freaking joke. Science. Science isn't settled. Let me ask you this one question. And if anybody can get in contact with Robert Redford, please let me know. Because I really want him and I want Al Gore. Oh my God, Al Gore. I want Al Gore to answer me. What exactly is the optimal temperature that we should have globally? 
all over the globe, what is the optimal temperature that we should have? What is it? And they're going to go, I, 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 uh, 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 let, let me be clear. Clear about what? Clear about how science isn't settled and you have no freaking clue? You don't know? The only thing that's settled is it's not settled. The only thing that's settled is weather happens. It happens every day. Today, it felt like 100 degrees. Tomorrow, eh, it might only feel like 80. Uh Uh-oh. Global cooling. Of course, on the next day, it could feel like 110. Oh, my God! Quit driving your SUVs! Shut your SUVs off! We gotta tax the crap out of you! Oh, spare me the crap, you freaking genius. You know what? Go back and act awesome in a really bad movie. You know, climate changes every day. It does. Weather happens. Whether or not we want it to get hot or get cold is out of our control. No more than driving an SUV down the highway doing 80 and watching your gas gauge as a speedometer changes the temperature outside. It doesn't. How many climatologists have come out and said, yeah, um, the numbers, the, what we see doesn't support anything that we've been saying? It doesn't. We're sorry. Yeah, we're no smarter than anybody else. But I'm looking over at the clock and I'm realizing that it's pretty darn late. And, you know, I want to thank everyone that has tuned in. Uh, You guys have been great. Uh, Everybody that has contributed in the chat, you guys are phenomenal. Um, Love you guys so much. All the listeners out there, I absolutely adore you. Um, And that is... Sadly, all the time we've got for this week, and God willing, the Stafford voice, I, Daniel Stafford, will be back next week. If you're not already doing so, follow me on Twitters at Stafford Voice. Also, please do yourself a favor. Download the Periscope app on your smart device, Android or that dreaded Apple device. You can download Periscope and you can get exclusive pre-show coverage or... Any time during the week on any hot button topic, you may or may not get an alert from me that says, hey, let's talk about this. Um, So, again, Periscope is linked through Twitter, so it's super easy to set up. You log one click on your smart device and you are logged in through Twitter into Periscope. And whenever you're watching somebody scoping, and you want to let them know that you're listening and you absolutely adore what they're saying, just continue to tap the crap out of the phone, out of the screen, and send them some love by these little hearts that pop up. It lets them know that that they're doing a great job, and it lets them know that their message is resonating with you. Um, uh, also, since you're already out on the interwebs, Look me up on Facebook, search for The Stafford Voice. Email your questions, comments, concerns, hate mail, love mail, whatever it is. Send it to daniel at politattainment.net. Thank you so much for your time tonight, and until next week, thanks, and God bless.